not to be hyperbolic, but if you are interested in the longevity industry at all, today's episode is going to get you pumped up. Juvenescence is one of the biggest players in the world of anti-aging. The world of not just increasing the number of years that we live, but increasing the number of healthy years that we live. I got the pleasure of interviewing the CEO of Juvenescence, Dr. Gregory Bailey. In this episode, Dr. Gregory Bailey gets me absolutely hyped up about investing in the longevity industry. The longevity industry is one of the few investment opportunities out there that can potentially reward early investors with some of the largest returns in all of human history, but is also one of the most altruistic investments that you can possibly make, adding five to 10 to 15 to even 20 years of healthy lifespan across billions of people. Again, this was an extremely hype interview. And every time I listen to it, I get more and more excited. So without further ado, Dr. Gregory Bailey. Dr. Greg Bailey, thank you so much for joining me today. Pleasure to be here, James. Greg, you are the CEO of Juvenescence, one of the largest, if not the largest, biotech longevity investment fund in the world. I'd like to ask you a few questions about how you got introduced to the world of longevity and how Juvenescence as a company kind of came about. Sure. To start with, we're not a fund. We are a drug development company. And Stan, you would probably argue they're in anti-aging as well. And they have a $12 billion market cap. So, But we are the only biotech company exclusively focused on anti-aging and creating a diverse portfolio. We have competitors who are focused on specific areas or specific modalities of therapy. Then to go back to the second part of your question, I met a gentleman named Luigi Fontana probably nine years ago now at the Milken Conference. And Luigi is one of the top scientists in the world for caloric restriction and how it affects health and longevity. And it is the only, at the time, proven therapy that extends human life, both the quality of life, your health span, how long you live healthy versus how long you just live, but also increased longevity. The next year, I met a guy named Walter Long. Oh, chronic caloric restriction is, for men is 1,800 calories, for women, 1,200 calories a day. So then I met uh, the next year, also at the Milken Conference, Walter Longo. And Walter felt that you could get exactly the same response by intermittent fasting. Uh, once a month for people overweight, once every three months for normal weight, and once every six months if you were particularly skinny. And during those intermittent fasts, is five days, 800 calories, no meat products, and uh, minimal carbs. And that he let, let, or actually the guy likened it to high intensity training, which you can do intermittently. And you, it serves you as well as if you ran 10 miles a day, if you once a week do high intensity training. So that was interesting to me. And then the third piece of the puzzle was Walter Boards was the head of gerontology at Stanford, who told me that fit people mentally age and physically age at a half percent a year, unfit at 2% a year. And that one of his colleagues at Stanford found that if you're fit, you live eight years longer, again, healthy than people and longer than people who aren't fit. Well, you and I, James, know that there's nothing magical about diet restriction or intermittent fasting or exercise. Fundamentally, it's doing something at a cellular level. And so from there, I began to do some research and was intrigued that scientists were beginning to discover the pathways, cellular pathways of aging like rapamycin and mTOR, both the drug and the cellular pathway, AMPK, NAD, and sirtuins. And one thing I know about scientists, if they understand the pathway, they're going to figure out a way to play with it. And so I began sending my two colleagues, Declan Dugan, former head of drug development at Pfizer, who we've been doing a number of drug development projects before Juvenescence, and Jim Mellon, a polymath scientist and author, all this information about how wow, it's happening now. You know, we're going to be able to modify aging. And then two years ago, actually three years ago, four years ago now, Jim, Jim decided to write a book called Juvenescence, same name as our company, because he went around to talk to all the top scientists and institutions in the world. They basically gave Declan and I a roadmap for people to go talk to, begin to put together a company. 
And I can tell you that if anyone had told me that we would be able to raise $168 million in a little over two and a half years and have 22 modality agnostic therapies that could modify how long we age, I would have said it was crazy. You know, that's crazy. A, to have assembled that many products and B, to assemble to raise that much cash. And then the next piece of the puzzle is we've been able to attract extraordinary people to work with us on this project over that two and a half years, which basically started out with two people active. Long-winded answer. So I want to go back. You said that you're not a fund. You do have sizable amounts of equity in companies like Insilico and Ajax, but you guys are also developing your own drugs. Are any of those drugs, I mean, how far along are those drugs? I don't know how much you can talk about that. We only invest in companies that we can have a significant say in what they're doing. And Silico was an aberration. We did that deal more to get access to the pipeline of drug discovery products that they were focusing on in anti-aging. And Ajax, we thought we could make a material difference working with Mike West, who I believe you've already interviewed, and trying to go into spontaneous tissue regeneration and create the dream of stem cells that are one day old, not 70 years old, and then a graft and beat as one with your heart or able to re-anastomose your uh, spinal cord. We are in a phase one slash 2A trial this, later this year for liver transplantation. Basically, this company has done something extraordinary. And every now and again, I'm shocked that somebody comes up with something that just seems to be outside the norm. And Eric Lagasse, the scientist at the McGowan Institute, did that. And that we have to get a liver transplant in the United States is seven hundred thousand dollars, roughly, procedure, and we don't have enough livers. And he's thought, what if I took lymph nodes and I injected them with liver cells, hepatocytes? Would they function as secondary livers if they drained into the bile duct or into the liver? And in four hundred animal studies, they do indeed prevent it animal from dying of liver failure if he does this procedure. So we go into a phase one slash two a trial for that, which was captivating when we first saw it because could you do the same thing for a type diet one diabetic where you took beta islet cells that create insulin from the pancreas, basically pancreatic cells and injected them into the lymph nodes by the pancreas? Could you reverse diabetes, type one diabetes? What if we did it to the organs like the thymus that are involved in the aging of your immune system? Can I reverse the aging of your immune system, which would be fantastically topical, unfortunately, with the pandemic that is afflicting so many people globally? Really excited about that one. And next year, we go into three more clinical trials in a variety of pathologies, and we launch our first product this year with Colin Watt and his team. So you're launching your first product this year. Can you talk about which product that is? Yeah, it's a ketone ester named beta-hydroxybutyrate. It's out of the Buck Institute for Aging, uh, one of the top institutions in the world, 200 of the top scientists working to figure out how to modify aging. And in animal models, it was geroprotective, cardioprotective, and neuroprotective. So basically, the animals live longer. They protected their heart and their brain. What we know is your heart prefers ketones over carbs and your brain prefers carbs over ketones, but to its detriment. It would be better served if it was getting, if it was able to get its energy source from ketones. And so by doing this product, which will initially be a drink and then later it will be a powder, you can literally put yourself into a state of ketosis so that you, you protect your brain and your heart, and hopefully it reproduces the same results as it did in animals, and it, it allows you to live longer. So that launch is late September, early October, and we're very excited about that, and will help us launch another part of our puzzle, which is our ability to interact with people who are taking our products, where they, whereby they become participants with us if they share their data, and so the data I learned from you, James, could help me or any other people. And similarly, data from me can help everyone else who's part of this program. So we learn when's the best time to take our product, which may be different for you than for me. We know how much you should take. It'll begin to, to assess that out. And the more biometric data you share, the more I can dovetail a lifestyle program for you, which we hope to, with machine learning, get to the point where I can literally tell you what should lunch or dinner be the biggest meal of your day? Do you need to increase in your endurance training? And I need to increase my high intensity training. 
So I think, and then what supplements should we take and when and what combinations? So really excited about the frontier. This is going to be a area that is going to be so much more explosive than people think because so many of the products we see are IP protected products that are so safe that we can launch them to consumers with an easier regulatory path. So we're hopeful that we will close on two more of those type of products and be able to launch them next year as well, which have extraordinary effects. One of them in boosting the immune system, which again is incredibly topical, unfortunately. Yeah, this all sounds extremely exciting. And from your perspective, I imagine this is quite a fulfilling company to, to be a part of. And <laughs> yeah, really altruistic, really moving things forward as for humanity. So it's extremely interesting to hear about all of this stuff. And Juvenescence is a huge player. So since you guys have done a couple investments with, as we mentioned, Ajax and Silico, which is the AI company, what is your, or I guess the Juvenescence investing philosophy when it comes to longevity? Do you think that there's certain things that, certain parameters, I guess you'd say, when investing in longevity that, or maybe let's say the opposite of that, investing in tech, investing in e-commerce, something like that, versus investing in longevity? Do you think there's a lot of differences in that? A, the industry needs a lot more money than us. So for any of your listeners, we will be able to modify aging. Science fiction is now science. It's actually happening. It's going to happen so much faster than you think, but it needs capital. So when we are looking at project to invest in, we've got to be able to value add. And so what we think we've built and this is because it's such a noble quest. I mean, wow. I mean, if I can add 10 healthy years of life to you and every one of your loved ones, I mean, you know, you change the world. So the people are very passionate about it who come to work with us. We've been able to attract extraordinary talent because of that. So, but still, when we're looking at a product, can we add value? You know, if they have great drug developers and they know how to market their product, they probably, they just need us for money. That's probably not a proper fit. Because we definitely are, are developers. We, you know, we will bring the project in-house to develop it. And most of the other companies, and or not even companies, they're mostly things out of universities, most of the other science we've been licensed. So that's a major focus. Can we influence the outcome of the product? In the case of biotech versus other, any other sector, it's much like, there's probably the only one that I can think of is mining, where literally you drill the hole and your company is either hit oil and gold and you're worth $10 million or you didn't hit hit and you're worth you know, a dollar. So we have that sort of light switch moment where products that we've been licensed are either going to be worth an extraordinary amount or they're not. So that's unique in tech where there's network effect and there's all sorts of other things that can materially affect the outcome of your industry. Fundamentally, though, I would say that just like tech, it comes down to people. Uh, Colin has been able to add extraordinary people to his team with Joe McCarthy from Publicis and previously before that Nike and Gerson, former head of supply chain at, at J&J, Sam Normal Digital Media, uh, Terry, one of the top vitamin scientists. So, and then on the other side, I got Declan, uh, plus the head of clinical drug development at Pfizer. And I've got the former head of the Crick Institute, who's head of European R&D at Pfizer. So you put amazing people around these products you change the risk reward profile. And I guess that's like any other industry. You know, if you get amazing people and then it's just trying to be clever on the ones you pick. Happily, Deck and I have got a pretty good track record of picking uh, the right products, right horses to back. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. My question is, so you said the industry needs capital. How can someone who's, let's say, a traditionally a tech investor or a, a non-biotech investor like myself, get involved in an educated, let's say a not super risky way? Like which projects should we be looking at? Would you say just invest in companies that have already IPO'd? I mean, on my end, I've had a few opportunities to invest in some different biotech companies. And when I look at the deck, it's just a bunch of results <laughs> that are extremely hard to make sense of. Yeah, exactly. So I'm curious your thoughts on that. Because yeah, it can be very intimidating to see this type of scientific data when I'm looking at the decks and just try to make sense of it. Is this accurate? Is this even something that's impressive? Yeah, no, it's daunting. And I think it's, it's unfortunate because people are willing to invest in another app or social media, but they're scared off by biotech. 
to me, you know, as an, is, you know, when I, and I am an investor in the sector as well as a participant, is you look at, does the science make sense? Yeah, and if it's some obscure monoclonal antibody working in some esoteric gene, yeah, I, I can't understand that. So does the science make sense to me is one of my big hurdles. Is there IP protection? That's pretty easy to check. Does, do they have strong intellectual property position? Okay, do I agree with the business plan? Do I think, wow, this, you know, this makes sense to me? And then do I think the management team can execute on that business plan? And then the fifth and the most very, very important one is, do they have adequate capital to get to that light switch moment where they get the results from the drilling or in this case, a positive clinical trial? And if they have those five things, I feel comfortable investing. So those are the parameters. Then when you come to our spec sector specifically, it's clearly going to be huge. I mean, Bank of America said it's $504 billion market by 2025. That's less than five years. There will be a company or companies that are going to be worth two or $300 billion. If you are a share and a, a, an investor, this is not a sector you can ignore. So if you're really good, knowledgeable, you got that PhD, then you can try and pick the winners. If not, and why we set up Juvenescence the way we have, we've created a portfolio. You just had some of the top people in the world pick the products. The same people that the biggest funds in the world would hire to pick the products that they should invest in. But they're not just picking them. They're also working with that company, creating this, this team around it to develop those products to mitigate the risk. And by the way, the team has created, I think we're at $27 billion worth of market value for and shareholder value. So to me, whether it's a fund, which you could do as an individual, but institutions can't do because it's a double dip if they're charging their people and then they fund charges. But to an individual, you could definitely do a fund that has a great track record, of which there aren't too many right now that I'm aware of. It's just like two or three that are exclusively focused on aging. Or you can pick a portfolio company. And right now, to the best of my knowledge, you could argue like biosciences, they're really focusing quite now on ophthalmology. So I think that we're probably, if maybe the only company, but certainly one of a handful of opportunities where you've done that. And our whole business model has been about hiring extraordinary people from the drug development side and for our non-RX consumer side, people who have an incredible track record of bringing products to market, successfully bringing products to market. I think you guys mentioned in, in one of the interviews that an IPO might be coming soon, but I assume with uh, all the stuff that's going on right now, that's probably been postponed for a while. This is beyond meat. This is an investment. If you were to invest in Juvenescence, we're in the midst of a $150 million capital raise. And so, and it's a pre-IPO round. So it's to set the table for that IPO, which originally we thought was going to be this year, but the pandemic has added a few twists to that, that's that narrative. So, but basically, this is an extraordinary theme. Uh, huge companies are going to be created. I think they're not going to be big pharma because they'll be more the distribution entities for the ones who are doing this primary work like we are doing, like Life is doing, and like a couple of other companies at Unity are doing. So they will do that, and it, we will be the ones growing. So it's a theme, which you either believe or you won't believe, that we're going to modify aging over the next few years. I would argue we're already doing that with Metformin, and we will with our product, uh, Metabolic Switch, which is our beta hydroxybutyrate ketone ester that launches later this year. So we're doing it now. And then this is going to be an extraordinary theme. Do you believe in the theme? Do you believe in the vision? Do you think the management can execute? So in talking to all of the big banks, the major investment banks for healthcare, they all understand that. Their analysts understand it, that it's going to be one of the top 10 most disruptive technologies, according to Citibank. So yeah, I think that this is an investment that people will understand. If I go back to my first point of how to invest, do you understand it? I don't need to understand all the pathways that I first started mentioning, the cellular pathways, but I do understand if you can modify the pathways that cause you to age, I'm going to be able to forestall it. Do I understand that if somebody's in liver failure and I can create a second liver in the lymph node? That makes sense. I get it. And it worked in animals. So I don't think this is going to require a PhD. I do think the public will capture this like they did with Beyond Meat. This is, this is going to be a huge transformative. It's one of the greatest opportunities, as Jim Mellon says. It's a money fountain. You know, people who invest a little bit intelligently here, and even if they invested in everybody in the sector, are going to do extraordinarily well. Yeah, one of the, I guess you'd say the hypest 
quotes from the Juvenescence book was, this will be the <laughs> greatest investment opportunity in all of human history, which it's extremely exciting to read that. It's what I think so as well. Uh, I've traditionally always invested in, in tech, startups, all that stuff. And I've, I'm personally moving everything over into the longevity industry. So yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, it's a very exciting industry to be a part of. And the ROI is going to be crazy. Which kind of brings me to my next question. What areas of longevity? Obviously, you have senescence. And senescent cells are a huge... A lot of companies are targeting senescent cells. Are there any other industries, that other areas, that are maybe not getting as much attention, but have some serious ROI potential once they get some money? We pretty much know what they are. They've done the pinwheel of aging. So you know, there's eight or nine things, depending on who did the pinwheel, as far as to reverse the process of aging what you need to do as far as clearing up cellular junk, and the clearing up the cells that are now zombie cells and senescent cells to regenerate tissue. I mean, I won't go through the, the nine things. So I think we, we mainly know what they are. Just the whole sector needs more money. I mean, when you look at the amount of money that's available to what, as Jim says, is going to be one of the greatest investment opportunities that's going to be transformative for humanity, that it's not, you know, it's not more readily available. So all of the elements, gene manipulation, uh, regeneration of tissue, spontaneous regrowing of limbs, like uh, Ajax is, is going to embark on shortly. Those sort of things, we just need the money to make them happen faster and to accelerate the program. So it's just not cardiac tissue you're working on, it's a CNS tissue as well. And to the synolytics, as you've talked about, what is the right synolytic? What right combination? What co- is the right cocktail? How do we personalize this? I don't think enough is being done right now on personalization, of uh, figuring out what the mix of cocktails are. But I'm very optimistic in Silico. We have a small division internally called Relation at this point in time. We'll sort out combinations that are going to be important. So it's just getting more money to the sectors. It's interesting. I mean, there's three things you'll spend your last dollar on, food, shelter, and your health. So in Jim's quote about this being the greatest investment opportunity of modern history, this is something everybody cares about. Elon Musk, there's lots of people who want an electric car, but it isn't 7.8 billion people who are all getting older. This is like global, and it's every country, every person. And then it's just, how do I make a price point as low as possible so that everybody can participate on that. So I'm very excited about metabolic switch and that our pricing looks very good. It should be available to a lot of people. So to reiterate, just because, yeah, everyone I've talked to, like I said, have done four interviews so far. And yeah, the industry is starving for money. So if anyone's listening out there, I mean, how can... <laughs> <laughs> what, I, I'm it's sure... Your health. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so where let's say someone maybe doesn't have a million dollars to invest into the industry, maybe they have $10,000, $50,000, something like that, you would just suggest to find a fund, find some sort of portfolio management company, someone who doesn't, who can't really figure out if the science makes sense. Is that, would that be your suggestion? As I said, some of the science is pretty easy, and, but it's more what quantum of capital is available. It's why when you ask the question, a couple of questions ago about us going public, if we were public today, you can buy shares. And this is where I think this is going to be an enormous retail play. Classically, you know, IPOs have been led by the giant demons of the industry, Fidelity, Wellington. But this is one I think is going to appeal, like Beyond Meat did, to the average person. They're going to get it. This is an important thing. And I can invest in this company that has 22 products run by really smart people and also is launching products right now that I can use. I think that it's why we want to go public, Jim and I, because we're mainly the finance team at to, in essence, we wanted to go public earlier than later. I think this is an enormous retail story for that very individual. And then the more capital they can put into us, the greater we can do to advance the science because it is, it's just happening so fast. I mean, and what people are coming up with is just so extraordinary. You can regenerate a limb. You can regrow a limb, seriously, to you know, clean up these cells that literally reverse aging. So ideally, when we started, we were hoping we were slow aging. Now I see that there's opportunities in certain tissues and organs that we can halt it. And recently, we've even seen that you potentially can reverse it. So super, I mean, just an amazing, been an incredible journey. Getting more and more excited about the people I get to work with and the science I get to see. 
Yeah, every conversation I have, I mean, the conversation I had with Mike West was just absolutely mind blowing. What they're working on over at Ajax, man, really just, it gets you really excited and really hopeful for the future. The regeneration of a heart cell in a Petri dish, all the stuff they're working on. It's, it's very, very exciting. And the world is going to be a vastly different place. And I tell my friends, I tell everyone I can that it's going to be a different world in 20 years once this stuff starts really coming out once in a meaningful way, which I guess brings me to my next question. When do you think the molecules that are being worked on or the therapies, the biologics that are being worked on right now, when do you think we'll start to see a meaningful impact on longevity? Because obviously one or two years is cool, but when do you think we'll start to see <laughs> life extension of 10, 15, 20 years? How long do you want to live, James? I never want to die. <laughs> it's actually a three-part question. When I usually ask, because I do a lot of presentations on this subject, I ask people how long they want to live. And most people say 90, 100, and then, or even 80. And then I say, how long would you like to live if you were healthy? Eh, they add 10 or 20 years to that. And then I say, how long would you like to live if you had the anatomy and the physiology of when you were 25? And then we get an answer like you started with forever, some people say 150, but it suddenly changes the paradigm is that element. So as I said, we're launching a product that has demonstrated longevity in animals. It's impossible as we don't know humans because we haven't run an 80 year clinical trial on it. But uh, our assumption is it will add lifespan. It'll, you know, it'll be in the three to four years probably as opposed to the, the 10 to 20 years that, you're, that you seek. I think it's going to come in stages. There's one gated, two gating factors. So there's a huge argument of whether we, we sort of are time stamped and 125 is as long as we can live, no matter what we do, that your body's pre programmed to fail. And then there's another theory that it's 150. And then uh, Aubrey de Grey and many others and Mike West believe that it's actually immortality. What I would say to you is until we sort out two pieces of the equation, it's 120 and 150, because if we cannot get rid of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's neurodegeneration, or if we cannot uh, figure out how to regenerate tissue, nobody wants to have Alzheimer's for the last 60 years of their life, and nobody wants to be in a wheelchair. So we've got to sort out those elements. Those are the gating factors to really, even if we figured out cellular aging tomorrow, we still hurt our knees skiing, we twist our ankle and it, it causes permanent damage. So those are the, the gating factors to getting you your longevity. Now, having said that, we are working on it. When they're going to be available, Mike West, and I'm a great believer in Mike and his science, hopefully them and, and there's others working on the regeneration of a knee joint and stem cells and senolytics, which we're going to help there as well with osteoarthritis. So it's a, aging is a process and there's a number of things we need to go after and some of them are going to be gating. One of our companies I'm very excited about with Lee Wei and Stephen Haggerty is working to epigenetically, meaning influence your genes as an adult to prevent you from getting neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. My personal belief in a previous company, Medivation, which was incredibly successful because of a prostate cancer drug, failed in our phase three clinical trial for Alzheimer's disease. I'm not sure we can treat Alzheimer's. Once the cells start to misfold proteins, I'm not sure you can reverse it. And I'm not sure cleaning out the protein will alleviate Alzheimer's. What I do think is you, there we have a chance to prevent it. So one of the forms of Alzheimer's I felt for a long time is a form of type three diabetes. Uh, due to our bodies not reacting to insulin as we get older. And I think there are certain drugs that can actually bring the sugar down to your brain, like metformin, and they may prevent one of the forms of Alzheimer's. We're also now talking about it potentially having an effective quality. Herpes has been postulated for another form of Alzheimer's. So, but those are all about prevention. You know, if the herpes virus has infected your brain, I don't think we're going to figure out how to reverse that process if the insulin is done cause the cascade of actions that will lead to that form of Alzheimer's. I'm not sure you can reverse that, but I do think we can prevent it. And couldn't be more excited about Lee Wei and Stephen Haggerty's work. I mean, that'd be extraordinary. Yeah, well, it's all a super interesting and exciting industry you're part of. And I, I appreciate you hopped on this call with me, Greg. I know you're a busy guy, so um, I can close this up now. But thank you so much again. And I'm sure the audience is going to really enjoy this one. The one last thing I'll leave you with is if we had immortality, James, today, and the only way you could die, which I can't 
change is accident, homicide, or um, accident, suicide, or homicide. What age, what do you think the average lifespan would be for a human? The only way that you could die is from... Uh, accident, suicide, yeah. and homicide. And, well, it, and the rate stays the same as it is today. I may have a cheat answer to that because Mike West <laughs> answered this question on his podcast, but I'll say 600 years. Yeah, I mean, it's variable. Uh, some people say uh, anywhere from you know, 600 years to 1,024 was the actuarial model I saw. And the really fun number I'll leave you with was one person in 5 billion will live to 25,000. Wow. Have a very good day, James. Thank you for having <laughs> me on your podcast. If you got this far, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. If this was at all interesting to you, I'd love to connect on Instagram and hear your feedback. I'll also be posting clips from the latest episodes, as well as anything else I find interesting about the biotech industry. You can find me on Instagram at Simple Biotech. And if you're interested in the companies that I'm looking at and the companies that I'm excited about, connect with me on AngelList at angel.co slash James Rule. That's James R-U-H-L-E. Thank you so much and be safe out there.